Bernadine Anderson, welcome to Hard Talk. You have been involved with this school from the very beginning. What does it mean to you? At this point, sir, it means everything to me. It has literally changed not only my life, but the life of the teachers that have had this wonderful opportunity to meet these children. A children that we had, unfortunately, in Sri Lanka grown up to fear because of their reputation during the war. Uh, it was an amazing uh, opportunity to actually meet these children and understand from their point of view. When you first encountered them and began to talk to them, what did you find? What I found was confusion. They were, they were truly confused. I think that was one word that, uh, that came to me. There were others who were angry. But this is very delicate stuff, isn't it? We are talking about children. I mean, most of them here between 14 and now 18, but when they were with the Tigers, they were from 12, 13 through to 16, 17. These are kids, and you are having to tread in very sensitive areas of their psyche, of their very being. Uh, that approach, sir, I think was just love. The first, uh, uh, to when I got to meet them for the first time, I remember just telling them that we love them. And it came without any reservation from my whole team. And they couldn't quite really grapple with that. And when we told them, we're here because we care. And uh, down the line, one day they asked me, how much are you paid for this? And when we told them that we get paid nothing, there was a moment there of, of care really reaching over and, and healing. But is it also important to get them to talk, at least to a certain extent, about the past and about what they have done and what they were forced to do? Uh, that did not come very easy, especially from the girls, because I think uh, from the stories that uh, we have exchanged, mainly through drama, we act out real stories. And uh, in, through this acting, you always find that the, the girls are the ones, in my opinion, who have actually been the more forced uh, into or the most uh, traumatized, uh, for a better word, uh, by everything that has happened. And to have their hair cut and to have them brought in, that's the one story they all tell us, how their hair was cut off. And when we tried to groom them, and the brigadier recommended it, and I brought this very high-flown saloon from Colombo, they wouldn't let us touch their heads. They just put their hands like this. And then a girl raised out and showed me the cut she had around her neck because, you know, their hair had been sliced off with a knife. It's hard sometimes uh, to remember. As I look around the, the college campus now, and over there I can see girls playing volleyball, and on the other side of the field the boys are playing cricket, it is hard to remember that these children were fighters up to a year ago. Uh, and serious fighting, sir. There was a time when we wanted to do a game and this boy said, I can't because I have bullets in my stomach. The other girl who said, I am reading but I can't see because the, the vibrations have shattered her, her visuals. She doesn't look like she's blind, but she has big issues uh, and uh, kind of a degenerating eyesight. It's, it's among quite a few of them. But for these children, what do you believe they will do when they do go home back to the Tamil north of this country? It's a question, sir, that is uh, truly, truly uh, one of concern at this point. Uh, there is uh, a plan, I know, out in, in print, uh, but they themselves are not sure of how society is going to get them back. They have told me that they feel uh, that the unconditional love they have got here and the, the acceptance may not be the same back in their villages, in their, among their own because of uh, certain backgrounds and... Um, some issues. will resent them because some resent what the Tigers did to their communities. Yes, and uh, they are aware of that, sir, which is why a, a few of them have actually asked, uh, can they stay back? And I just wonder, when you look in their faces, do you believe any of these children could go back to war, to hate, to conflict? I mean, I've spoken to every one of them, and they all say that they don't want it. They want to work for it. They feel, um, I think, empowered enough to be able to stand and say, no, if we can bring up the economy and bring up uh, a situation where they don't have the need to, uh, uh, to the need to Well, to feel that feel anger. Ex absolutely. And to feel that their life is not fair. 
we will. We, we, I am committed to not letting that happen. And I think the team that has been involved in this project is committed to that. So they know that we have a lifeline to each one of them. And I mean to do that. I really mean. I'm coming back for that. Bernadine Anderson, thank you very much indeed for thank being you, on Hard Talk. Thank you. Very unexpected, but wonderful. Thank you, sir. The aim here, with an emphasis on sport and fitness as well as education, is to make these former child fighters into the finest young people of their generation. To give them the discipline and self-confidence to lead the recovery effort when they go back to their war-torn villages. It's an investment in the future which is costing the Sri Lankan government tens of millions of dollars. But the hunger of these young people, not just for a decent education, but for a better future when they return home, won't be easy to satisfy. There is no doubting the warmth and the commitment of the staff here, and there's no doubt that the young people here are responding. But there's no getting away from one simple fact. This rehabilitation program is overseen by the Sri Lankan military, the victors in a brutal war. And that raises serious questions. Brigadier Sudanta Ranasinghe, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you. You are responsible for this rehabilitation program here in the Hindu College. The young people who are here, do you see them first and foremost as children or as ex-fighters? From the day they join me, they are children. And I have banned anyone calling them ex-fighters or child combatants or child soldiers or not even rehabilities. You banned it? I banned Why? anyone calling them because they are children, they are victims. And uh, I consider them the children. They are going through the formal education and uh, they have their life. They started their life here because they, they never had life back there before they joined us. It strikes me as problematic that children who've been brought from a war zone and who have been uh, told for so long that the Sri Lankan military is the enemy now find that the school they are being rehabilitated in is in essence run, at least this part of it, by the Sri Lankan military. So really, it's only the head who is controlling this, who is uh, coordinating this, this military. But the people who are the actors who are really physically getting involved with these people are teachers and who are employed here. They are school teachers, the lady warden and the male warden, both are school teachers. And they are the teachers who are doing it. And the main responsible officer here is a volunteer officer who is really not 100% military, he has his civil street job and he's a volunteer man. I don't doubt their commitment, but I do think it's strange, for example, that during the course of today, going around the school, I have seen uniformed military personnel. At one point there were a few uh, soldiers uh, at that end of the school. I just wonder if that is appropriate, given the circumstances in which these children have come to this school. Yeah, there is a security element here because these children were picked up from uh, up north, they were brought to Colombo, and their security is very important and I'm responsible for their security as long as they are with me. Of course, for security reasons, we have military people around the school complex looking after their security. But would you accept there's a problem that you bring them into this school, they've been through the most terrible experiences, here they are nurtured and they are given educational opportunities like they've never had before, and then they leave here and they go back to villages that have been ruined, they go back to a northern region where there are no jobs right now, where the economic circumstances are terrible, where housing infrastructure is decimated, and these children are going to say, we were told that Sri Lanka is now unified, that it's integrated, that we are all the same. And yet, here in our homes, the situation is still terrible. That's going to be a problem. Yes, I understand the school education in those areas are yet to get developed. Of course, they have started, but not 
to the level of what they experienced for last seven months in Colombo because this is one of the leading schools in Sri Lanka. But with respect, it's not just about schooling. I spoke to one child earlier who said that when they go home in just a few weeks' time, they will be living in a tent with their family because the family house was destroyed in the war. That's the reality. Yes, that I accept because uh, it will take time. But these children has all the options of continuing here with this school with us if they feel that they should continue. That op option is there and we are more than willing to give them that chance to live here, be with us in this school or any other school of their own choice till these problems get settled in those areas.